All right, this is James Pelton, and sorry about the delay. It's completely my fault. I actually uh, had some car problems, uh, tire problems. So uh, excited to be here today. We're going to talk about Ambo Pipeline is what we're going to be talking about. Um, so we have Al Kassim here from the team. We'll bring him on to introduce uh, himself here in a minute. What I need from you guys as we get started, as is our custom, please hit the like button. And then, yeah, if you guys have questions, please ask them all out. The more questions you ask, the better and the easier my life is. So I appreciate you guys uh, doing that. So let's go ahead and bring on our guest here, uh, Al Kasim. Welcome. I'm glad that you could join us here today. Um, do you want to start with a quick introduction of yourself, a little bit of your background? Is that all right, Al Kasim? Could you start with the uh, introduction and just give us a little bit about your background? Oh no, it looks like he might be frozen. Aksim, can you still hear me? Okay. He looks like he got frozen. So there, there he is. There he is. I'm here. Oh, brother. Yeah, okay, that's great. funny. You're freezing on my screen. Um, hey, everyone. My name is Aksim, and I'm the CSO at uh, Ambo Pipeline Limited. And today we're going to pitch to James of why he should buy a $250,000 Ambo NFT. And James, oh. those are the, let's it. We're going to tackle it in the way that you're about to buy a $250,000 NFT because that's the level of answers I want to be able to provide to you. I love that, actually. That would be that would have been a good title for this video is should I buy a $250,000 NFT? I absolutely love that. And that's a, that's a really good way for us to approach this is like, hey, if I was going to put in, you know, it's one thing if I'm going to put in 500 bucks or something, it's like, eh, OK, maybe it'll be all right. But that's a really good way to approach it. Absolutely. Um, I think as you can see, um, and as have you've heard from me in the past, I'm one of the most transparent people that you'll meet. Um, if you go through the AMAs over the last week, I've been very clear about the pros, the cons, and the risks of our project. And my goal is to make people's lives easier. You want people to make your life easier? Well, I'm one of those people when it comes to business because I truly believe if you look at all aspects of a business or an opportunity or a blockchain project, you should be able to get the full picture immediately from the person in front of you. And if they only tell you the good things, there is something wrong. Yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely true. Um, could you start out again? Just I think some of my audience is familiar with this. We did a Twitter spaces a while ago. Yeah. Um, could you start out by just kind of talking through an elevator pitch of what it what it is, and then how did you get hooked up into this project? Also, absolutely. Um, so elevator pitch, really, we are simply an oil pipeline project that's going to transport oil from Bulgaria all the way to Albania. We don't pump oil out of the ground or out of a well. We simply take it from one tanker, so a ship. We pump it through through four pumping stations. It gets to the deep sea harbor in Vlora, Albania and then it goes back into another tanker. The reason why our pipeline is a great idea, it is, if you look at the bottom right, uh, like very far, yeah, if you go a little bit further right with your mouse, there's a little slit, and that is the Bosporus Straits. That is the narrowest strait in the world at half mile wide, and any disruption in weather, politics, um, maintenance, two ships collide, it is immediately multiple days if not multiple weeks of a delay and generally those are the tankers that move the oil and they basically they go from like where you can see pump station one in the black sea and they will actually go through that strait and then they will go all the way around to the other side of albania that's currently the route they're taking and that's why we want to put that pipeline in that's the overview of our project yep okay no, very cool. Yeah, that's, that's super helpful. And uh, one one challenge that I have is not knowing anything about oil or oil pipelines or this area of the world. And so, yeah, any education you can kind of give us as we go about, you know, just how necessary this is and like like what you just did, I think is really helpful uh, for me. Sure. Um, so can you talk about so we kind of get what the project is. Yeah. Um, can you talk about the uh, the finances of the project? I know is you know, the, how much it's costing to build, what you think the final valuation would be. And then along with that, how come uh, part of it in crypto? Can you kind of just go, th go through that journey a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So the, it took 10 years for this project to get put into legislation. 
a lot of people, they, when they hear oil or an oil project, if you don't understand the industry very well, then you go, okay, oil, awesome. Like we'll jump to it make a whole bunch of money. Um, or you're on the other side of the fence where you hear the world, oil, oh, sorry, you hear the words oil industry, then you go, uh, I'm not into it. There's all these like political environmental things that go into place. I totally understand both sides. And that's how it was approached. And that's why it took so long because it's in Eastern Europe. There's a lot and there's three moving parts outside of AMBO. Um, there's a lot of negotiations that needed to go in place, a lot of approvals. And basically at the end of the day, the three countries approved the tariffs for themselves and they were okay with the percentages that the other two countries were getting. And 2007, this went into legislation, which meant it is now part of law. AMBO has the exclusive right to build this pipeline. This is why our project is important because it's not, it's not a first come first serve. It's been assigned to a company and that, that company has the right to build this. Now, in terms of construction costs, it's gonna cost us approximately $2 billion. Um, it's actually about 1.7 to 1.8 billion to do the whole thing, but we also have uh, a budget basically for interest, for overages, for unforeseen expenses. And that's where that little bit, of, little bit of buffer goes. Now, when the project is up and running, the projected valuation is $10 billion. And the reason for that is we are projecting to pump about 900,000 barrels per day. And the cost, if let's say the James Pelton oil company wants to transport an oil barrel, that oil barrel will cost you about $2 to $2.50 in today's dollars. So by the time we launch in three years, it might actually be three, uh, $3 or like three twenty-five per barrel. Um, to give you an idea, today we're looking at about $2 million per day in revenue. And three years from now, it's about $3 million in revenue per day. And okay. this, yeah, so it is, they're very large numbers. And just as importantly, we are looking to operate between, uh, well, sorry, at minimum, it will be 30 to 35 years because I'm sure we'll find other sources of oil. We might restructure how the world uses oil, but we are definitely looking at the minimum of 30 to 35 years of operations. Okay, very good. Um, and actually, this is a good question because I know some people are going to be thinking along these lines. Yeah. Um, you're not looking to, so funding 10 or $2 billion with NFTs is, is not going to happen, right? Like we're not at Absolutely. a place where NFTs do that. Yeah. So you already raised a bunch of money and now you're raising a little bit with NFTs. You want to talk about um, that experience and then why NFTs now for this, for this part? For sure. So we've already been pre-approved for the full project, $2 billion. It is getting privately funded. Um, that is working in two phases. The first phase um, is actually the full project funding. And the second phase is securing a collateral. The collateral in this case is 500 million, which we have already gotten in the works and got pre-approved for. Um, basically that's phase number two, and that is an operating line of credit. What we're putting up for that is our rights to build the pipeline. And the rights are approximately uh, $50 million in worth. And then that brings us to today, which is how do we want to utilize the blockchain? Uh, we wanted access to money to be able to cover the administrative costs over the next few months, um, the legal fees, basically, make sure all the contracts are in place, make sure uh, the funding is done correctly. And then at the end of the day, we have to pay commitment fees, due diligence, and deposits, basically. And these will activate our line of credit. Those are going to be about $2 million over the next 60 days. Um, and initially, I had pitched the idea of actually having a partial ownership through NFTs into the blockchain. And it was like this elaborate plan. And then it came to the reality of the legal structure is not ready for that yet. And it would cost a lot more money to be basically on the green side of le uh, legal and not get in hot water and possibly put a whole bunch of people in trouble because we did not do everything at 110%. So that's kind of how that was initially starting. And then, you know, we separated it. We remained as 100% of the business off chain. 
And then I'm like, you know what? We can do a proof of concept through the, uh, the blockchain is if we raise $5 million, then we have a plan for a second and a third pipeline. Those pipeline number two and number three can actually have a portion or possibly more than just a small portion on the blockchain because by then we would have the revenue through the current pipeline, which means we have the legal power and the financial power to make sure everything is more than 100% appropriate and making sure the people that are involved are being involved at a, like, regulation is checked, legality checked, there's no questions, there's no, oh, well, we're operating in a gray zone. We don't want any of that, especially being in the oil industry where regulations are probably one of the strictest across the world. Okay. Nope. Definitely yeah. got that. And, we, and we've got a lot of great questions from the audience already. So before we get to start getting to some of these questions, yeah. uh, let's talk about what it is that you're you're offering or what it is that you're looking for people to do. So can we talk sure. about what, about the NFT and when they're going to be launched and price and all that type of thing? Yeah, absolutely. The NFTs are going to launch in a few hours here. Um, and what we wanted to do was Initially, we we're going to take a short term loan, but uh, short term loans in like if you go out today and you look for an uncal uh, oh my God, an unsecured loan, it is very difficult. And the terms for it in terms of the interest that you have to pay are absurd. So that's when I brought the blockchain back up to my directors and I said, we could probably raise money faster and cheaper through the blockchain and we will pay it back in some form. Um, and we everything will be more efficient. Like, okay, we're listening. Let's see what you come up with. And what we're offering now is if you purchase an NFT, then we will give you AMBO tokens six months and then every year for at least three years. Excuse me. If you go to about, there's the tokenomics page and it will show you um, basically all the tiers that we have. It's going to be the third one, I believe. So, this also shows you kind of the position that we're in at the moment. Again, all the NFT is doing, it's a proof of concept if the blockchain is getting ready for big businesses. That's the whole point. We're not saying, if I to come here on your channel and say, James, I think the blockchain is ready for a $2 billion business just in construction fees, uh, I would be completely out of my mind and I would be completely dis disassociated from reality. And that's why our figure is a little bit more than the equivalent of what we're about to spend on legal fees over the next uh, two to three months. So that covers also administrative commitment fees because a commitment fee alone at a $500 million line of credit is about $1 million. That's just to make sure all the due diligence is done. Uh, the board of directors don't have a bad history or a malicious history. Uh, the second one was uh, just making sure that we don't owe people money. So if we get lent money, then we're not taking it and paying somebody else back. And then the new lender is stuck with bad debt. So they go through everything. It's about 130 points of due diligence that we have to go through. And at the very beginning, it was, we got to raise $50 million as a collateral. But in our case, we are putting everything on the table. We're putting the rights of the pipeline on the table. So if we mess up, we lose the rights of the table. And those rates are evaluated at about $50 million. That's uh, that's kind of the breakdown of things right now. Uh, so let's get into the structure of the NFTs. If you purchase an NFT, uh, we're actually going to do a two-week mint instead of a one-week. It's going to help a lot more people have the time to do the due diligence they need about us. Because we have nothing to hide. And that's why I'm here. Um, you know, Aside from having professional due diligence done, we want people to search by themselves come up to their own conclusions, their own research, all that stuff, no problems. First tier is $250. It really allows anybody to take part in our project. And the James Pelton tier, which is the elite tier, is 250 k What happens between those, well, as you can see, there's quite a few levels in between, and we really wanna have the opportunity of anyone to take part. For example, one of the biggest questions we were asked was, hey, if I have a large sum of money, do I have to mint 1,000 NFTs? Because I start the conversation with 250 bucks and I'm like, no, no, if you want 250K, you can spend that in one click and not pay gas a thousand times. You know, that's the goal. 
And then what came next was, okay, we want to pay the people back. But if we say we're guaranteeing a payback, then we start going down securities and all these things. And this is not a security. We're simply doing this as a proof of concept. So I'm being very clear. We're going to pay people back. Well, people will get a payment of an AMBO token. And that is six months from today, um, give or take a few days because the mint needs to close. And what we will do is if you get a, look, for in your case, you'll be getting 250,000 AMBO tokens plus the bonuses that we have in place. So the first bonus is 25% on day one, which is today. And for every million we raise, we're going to add 5% extra. With a cap, of course, because we're not crazy, um, the cap is at 5 million, which gets it to 50%. So that means in six months, we hit 5 million, you will receive 375,000 AMBO tokens. And then every anniversary date of the mint date, you will receive a total of 20% of your mint value. And if you scroll down a little bit, you could see a really good breakdown of how everything is calculated. That's the current proposition that we have. Um, the backing of the token valuation, because what we want to do is six months from now, we want to launch a private marketplace. And it's going to have four tokens in total, AMBO, USDC, USDT, and DAI. And you will be able to exchange your AMBO tokens to a stable coin. Now, obviously, liquidity will be rolling in uh, daily or weekly at that point. And then that liquidity is actually coming from our budgeted interest costs. It's not coming from thin air. It's not a Ponzi. This is coming from real cash that's already been asso um, assigned to interest costs. And then after year three, because we're up and running, the 20%, we're aiming for a minimum of 20. We want to go past that. And that is going to be backed because we have revenue. And that's why we're able to actually have liquidity available. In the future, um, if we do raise $5 million, then I have a very strong case for my board of directors to say, let's have a portion of the company go on the blockchain. And people that currently hold the NFTs will be on the priority list of getting an NFT for pipeline number two that will actually translate to ownership. So let's say it's a 100 kilometer pipeline and there's only 100 NFTs available. You own one, you own a kilometer of the pipeline and you will actually be assigned that kilometer. Kind of like mile markers on the highway. You know, they'll say mile five, for example, you'll be able to say I own mile five of the pipeline. And then you'll get the associated profit to go with that. But that's uh do you have to go maintenance it yourself? If if I own a part of the pipeline, do I have to go take care of it or that's something no, no if, if you're if that's your expertise, but no, it, it they are manned twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. We have an operating expense of roughly sixty million dollars per year. We have six hundred operating staff. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um one question, Vibe says, uh, why not just stable coins instead of this AMBO token? It's, we're pushing ourselves further away from any possible hot water of an investment or a security. The AMBO token technically has no guaranteed value, but we are backing the token at a dollar to dollar ratio. So if you choose to go on a public market and sell it for 10 cents on the dollar, um, I can't stop you and I'm not guaranteeing any any form of valuation but we will back we will give you a portal where you can exchange it at a one-to-one -one. okay gotcha that make um, that makes sense does this make sense do people have questions about the offering here so um so i know it's a little confusing when you read it but basically if we hit 50 million uh we're doing 150 percent back in to ample tokens after six months um the we will airdrop those <clears throat> And here's where I get into the risk. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, no problem. Hydrate up, man. Oh, man. So many AMAs, so little water and sugar. Um, their biggest risk, this is where we're going to talk about it and make sure people understand it. Because a lot of the time, um, you know, we got a lot of security questions aimed at us of, is the contract audited? Uh, are we scared the team is going to rug? It's like, no, no, we are... We've been KYC'd by the UK government. It was a part of our incorporation process. So basically, if we do anything wrong under our company's name, um, there's a 90% chance we're going to jail. And if we don't go to jail, like the rest of our lives are ruined anyways. So 
<laughs> there's that giant security portion to it. Um, yes, so that's for that. And what I want to just make sure. Oh my God, I'm losing my train of thought here. <laughs> well, that's fine. That happens to me all the time. Um, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> There's like the full team is docs. We're KYC'd. Um, our CEO has been in the oil industry for 58 years. So since 1964, that's Ted Ferguson. Uh, William has been around for about 40 years in the oil industry. And myself, I've been in the finance industry for just about 10 years now. And that's why my role is CSO. I'm really, my entire part in this project is making sure the funding happens. And that's what I've been able to do is I've been able to get the pre-approvals. Everything has been placed. Now, the last thing is we need to pass our due diligence uh, test through the assigned due diligence firm by our lender. And once that's checked off, we move forward. So basically I have delivered what I needed to deliver. The last portion is formality. And then after that, we can start the first phase of the project. Okay. Excuse me. Nope. Very good. Yep. Um, okay. So let me ask, uh, just to make sure that everybody has this straight. Um, so if yep. we're putting in $10,000, I like that you have an example here. I think that's a really helpful thing. Um, so you get your level five NFT, or if you're, you know, if you're doing a thousand bucks, somebody was asking about, um, you get your level three NFT. Um, and then after six months, you get your initial back plus a 20, 25% bonus yes. um, in AMBO tokens that will be tradable for stable coins. Um, and then there's an additional bonus if you guys are able to raise you know, more. Yep. Um, and then there's a 20% interest APR. Correct. And how long does that interest last? Is that the three years here or how long does no, that last? So the three years is just an example there. Um, it's good. It's an ongoing thing. Like we're, if you own the NFT for 30 years, you're going to get paid for 30 years. You know, as long as Ambo is up and running, there's going to be interest getting paid and there's going to be liquidity getting fed into the system. That's okay. uh, and that's why I say like, we're the current projections are minimum 30 to 35 years of operations. Okay. Gotcha. So this could potentially, if everything works out, it could potentially be an ongoing revenue stream for, for people uh, going forward. Um, what happens if, if you don't get things funded or what do you think is, are there, is there a possibility <laughs> the pipeline doesn't end up getting built or what are some of the risks on that side of things? There is always a possibility for that. However, for us, and that was kind of my lost train of thought earlier was the risk associated with our project. The risk associated with our project is time it is not actually the pipeline not getting built because we've already been written into law. We are in legislation. The pipeline is to be built. That part, everything's completed. The funding's pre-approved. Uh, basically, I can tell you with 99.9% .9 confidence that the due diligence will go through because nobody that's associated with our project has a malicious history. And Ted, like, Ted is, in his, is in his 80s now. And this is his legacy. That's what he wants to build to like officially retire. Um, the, like, that part, no risk really. The risk again is time. Because if our funding gets delayed, we've already put a buffer for the funding, by the way. So right now, we over the next two months, we pay for everything. It takes 90 days for us to get our first tranche of money. So we're looking at the end of quarter one, early quarter two, so March, April. And we are giving ourselves another 60 day buffer to make sure we can fill the, our marketplace with liquidity. In the scenario where the funding is not on time, again, 60 days is a buffer. In the scenario where the 60 days is not enough, that's where the risk comes in to the person purchasing an NFT. Because if we get pushed, anything more than 60 days, it means everybody gets pushed. That's really the risk. We will obviously continue to pay the AMBLE tokens because it's, it's built into the smart contract. There's no, that's, there's nothing we can take away from that. However, liquidity might be a little bit slower in terms of entering our marketplace than our plan is really. And that's the risk. Okay. okay got and it. worst case scenario, this is worst case scenario. We do everything we're supposed to and the project doesn't go through. Something happens I, like, to give you an idea, we have continuation plans in place, 
even if something happens to Ted, even if something happens to William. Because something happens to Ted, William goes in place. Something happens to William, Justin goes in place, who's the majority shareholder. He's been he's been with Ted for like almost all his life because his dad used to be like one of the, Ted's best friends and they've been in the industry their whole life. So, and then if something happens to Justin, then I come into the picture. But like, as you can see, we have multiple fallbacks. We have an entire engineering firm that's world-class. They're the ones that are in charge of building the project. So in any scenario, there is the best, best of the best basically handling pro the project construction. And then let's say all of this falls apart and there's no more AMBO project happening. That's when we will return the funds to the NFT holders on a proportionate level. So let's say we raise $10 million and we spent two, then the, there's a remaining 8 million that would get spread back at the same proportion that everybody uh, purchased, in a, purchased in an NFT with. So. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, good. No, I think that's that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, just looking at the audience for questions. Um, have you uh, do you want to talk a little bit more about are you concerned about the SEC at all? Is that um, something you know, not I, right. you want to talk about your thoughts on that? Def definitely not right now, because I we're very clear if you go through any of our website, like nothing of this, I'm not selling you an investment. I'm not telling you to invest in something. I'm not guaranteeing you a profit. I'm not saying there's profit share or there's equity of anything. This is simply a proof of concept for us to show that if we hit a certain figure of NFT sales or NFT loans, however you want to look at it, because it's not an investment. This is basically purely for entertainment at this point, um, and we're just gauging interest. In the future, we will have <clears throat> available legal, available funding, available structure in order for us to go to the SEC and go, hey, here's what we want to do. Can we get a green light on this? And then at that point, we can launch. And if they come back to us and say, here's a slap on the wrist, we can give them back their own paper and say, you okayed this. You got a problem with it. You got to modify it yourself, basically. That's that's the route we're taking. I'm telling you in advance, If we once we move forward and start to operate, then we will go down that route. However, if we raise like $5,000, Actually, it'll be two fifty from James plus five for the community. Uh, let's let's pretend we raised no money. Okay, what that means for our company and for myself, I no longer have a case for my board of directors to say we should have some portion of our company on the blockchain, and it would basically defeat my point of the blockchain is starting to get ready for a transition. The transition is then not ready. Maybe try again in like five years, but at that point. Who knows what happens the biggest issue and challenge for blockchain right now is adoption at a major scale i said it in previous uh, conversations a few years ago people were waiting for institutional money to hit the blockchain we saw that during the last bull run institutions are now starting to set three to ten percent of their portfolios into the blockchain but now we need actual adoption of the blockchain to basically justify why we need more than 10% of so-and-so's hedge fund portfolio, right? Because if there's no adoption, there's no sense of putting money into it. And that's, that's what I personally, that's a personal goal for me is we want to be one of the names in the industry that said, okay, they were one of the first to do it. Maybe we should try something similar. And then at that point, you're kind of like tugging on a rope and the rope just kind of keeps going one company at a time and the more companies will come on the more like innovative ideas you'll have the more different concepts you'll have and i'm sure most of them will fail but then you can have the brilliant ones that people will start to use as a standard and that's that's the important part because then you blink five years and that five years you go oh wow like we now have a decent adoption rate 10 years from now it's like okay if you're not on the blockchain like what are you doing yeah no absolutely um do you want to talk so again a lot of questions from the audience so we'll get through as many of these as we can um but you're going through multiple countries leaders can change laws do you have some kind of guarantee um yeah. what kind of that you know the countries will allow this to to happen so the guarantee is the fact it's written into law uh, in order for you to change the law at that point there would need to be a reason so all three countries 
they receive a pretty large tax for us putting a barrel, like any oil barrel that gets transported, a we pay a tax basically. Um, and I think it's somewhere around, if I remember right, the figure is somewhere around $100 million worth of taxes that goes across the three countries. Uh, Bulgaria gets about 50% because it's 50% of the length of the pipe is in Bulgaria. And then Macedonia gets about 25%. Albania gets the remaining 25%. And it's basically, yeah, if you look at the, um, the graph picture, oh, no, there you go, you're pulling up the map. Um, so if you look at the map of the pipeline here, you could see obviously like Bulgaria is the majority of um, the pipeline and that's why they get 50%. Macedonia is about 25 billion of uh, Bulgaria. Oh my God. Albania is the remaining 25%. Sorry. Okay. It's just, there's so many thoughts in my head right now, yeah, but no, this is totally. very exciting. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And then just to verify again, cause we're used to projects where oh, if they don't, the NFTs don't sell out, we're out of luck. Um, but you're that we're you're planning to still go through and everything like there's a lot more in this than the NFTs. That's so you're correct. just looking to get as much as you can, but it, it'll be moving forward regardless of what happens with the NFTs. That's right, and that's what um, maybe I have missed that part. But even if we raise no money, the people who have participated with the NFTs they will still get their rewards. Obviously, that means we don't have to put as much liquidity into our private marketplace. Uh, which is fine for us like either scenario we're budgeting to pay interest and that's okay um, it just means there's going to be less people involved in our project and it means we're not coming back to the blockchain that's what that means okay and yeah. then what oil producing countries are allowed to use this pipeline can russia use it so right now we there's the cpc pipeline which is like northern kazakhstan if i remember right justin is the one that's really the pipeline portion is his expertise. However, right now it is a mix. We're simply transporting oil, but if we are to build pipeline number two and pipeline number three, then we can do all of Kazakhstan's like oil with no Russian uh, mix to it. But right now it's just any oil shipper. We don't, as we move forward after the environmental and the uh, social study, then we will have exact, um, you know, contracts with oil companies, then that's, that's where we start to get into, okay, we work with this company, with that company, and then mixes are really dependent on where you are in the world. Okay. And why the 15 year wait between securing the contract and starting work now in 2022? Uh, funding fell apart in 2008. And that was because of the crisis. It took about three to four years completely off the project. And then there was a lot of hesitation in that area up until about 2019, where everything started to get tightened up again. Um, so that was just beginning of COVID, COVID. And obviously, there was hesitation for about a year and a half in terms of people starting to comfortably invest money. And that's why we were able to get our pre approvals uh, in April this year. Um, and then uh, this this question is coming up quite a bit. Um, so let's bring it up. Why oil? Uh, the future of the oil industry is declining. Do you want to talk about uh, talk about that with, you know, we're trying to move to alternative energy Absolutely. sources and get off oil. You want to talk about that? Of course. Uh, oil will always be a, a foundation pillar in whatever we use. Even if you go towards solar, your solar equipment requires oil to be manufactured. The production will decrease over time. There's no... Nobody can tell you otherwise. Like It's a finite source of energy, if you will. But our business model is to transport it. We could get into other things in the future. Uh, could be natural gas, could be shipping anything else really. But our main focus is get the oil from point A to point B. Okay. Uh, sorry, then, from point B to point A, because it's Bulgaria to Albania. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. That'll, that'll help me remember it. I'll remember now where all this is going. Yeah. Um, can the NFTs that we're minting here be sold on OpenSea after mint? Yes. Yeah. So the really cool thing about the NFTs is if they go wallet to wallet, they will actually be in pending status until verified by Ambo, just to make sure you're not about to get drained by some malicious smart contract or by somebody that's trying to take advantage of you. However, if you sell it on a trusted marketplace, there is no pending transaction status. You can sell it to whoever you want. However, once you sell it, 
the interest, the payback will always follow the wallet that holds it. Just to be clear, just so if I mint an NFT and I decide to sell it for a million dollars and say, hey, you're going to get 1.5 in six months. And then like, you know, oh, no, I have the founding wallet. I get all the money. No, no. It's whoever is holding the NFT on the dates that are proposed. And then the interest is going to be perpetual. Excuse me. So if you hold it for six months, uh, you will claim six months of interest and then it will get trans. Uh, get sent to the next person and they will start from zero and it will perpetually do like 20% per year worth of tokens and okay. the 20% sorry well last thing 20% is based on the mint value as per our example okay is there going to be any option to compound or anything like that or is it uh... no so the, the compounding option is generally to do with tokens but the tokens really just have a a backing value in the future, we're looking at possibly letting people upgrade their NFTs. So it is still on the table. We haven't said 100% yes or 100% no. Okay, nope, I think that makes sense. Um, and Mr. C, uh, Isaac, I appreciate you, man. Always watching the videos. And by the way, yes. yeah, thank you audience for all being here. Um, but he thinks we're at least another 30 to 50 years of using oil as a main source of energy. Do you kind of concur with that? I think so. And that's why like our very conservative number is 30 to 35 years of minimum operations. Mm -hmm. Obviously it's going to decline over time, but that's why we want to build pipeline two and pipeline three. Cause what that does is it completes the entire rub for us. It'll actually go from like underwater well, and then it will do the entire route. Okay. And uh, he makes the point too. Oil is used for other things than just energy. Um, I think sometimes right. we don't realize that. Um, so, and I don't know a ton about oil, so I can't even talk, touch on that. So I'm gonna have to leave it to you guys. To we're just, that. we're just transporting. All right. But it helps to have a, basically an executive team that is basically was born in oil and lived their entire life in oil. It sounds kind of messy, but yeah, no, I totally, yes, totally get what yeah. you're saying. But I mean, that's why I'm blessed to be a part of this opportunity and you know, I, I openly say this, I'm the youngest person on the team and I'm glad that I'm the youngest person on the team because otherwise if I was a, on the other end of this phone of this interview of somebody that's watching, I would have a lot of concerns. So really I'm just a young buck that's learning and getting mentored. So hopefully in the future, I, when the day comes, I can say, yeah, I have 60 years of experience in the oil industry and as an old fart. That's that's my goal. <laughs> right. Right. And like you you were saying, so they kind of have the oil stuff, but then the younger people like like yourself can bring in the blockchain side. Because they're right. probably these they, you know, sixty year old guys are probably not thinking about blockchain no, anyway. Yeah, like man, when I had the conversation with them, their question was, Have you done this before? And I was like, What, raised money? No, not at two billion dollar level, but like I've raised hundreds of thousands, like close to a million mark, yeah. They're like, no, 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 this whole blockchain thing. Like, have you done it previously? Like, yeah, I've been in the community since like 2018. It's not a, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't realize that was the question. It's like, yeah, we've been, we've been in it. We've been, you know, seeing real money, like this fake internet money. You can actually exchange it and you can see it in your bank account. And it was just like, like yeah, that's, this fake internet money has, real value to it and the people behind it are real yeah absolutely and i i was just putting together a spreadsheet real quick just just to help people visualize this uh because i'm a spreadsheet guy um yeah, so people were asking about it um but so here's here's what it looks like so you have your initial sacrifice we'll say the ten thousand dollar nft yeah. um after six months you're getting twelve thousand five hundred dollars back Yes. And then each year after that, until the pipeline dies, which we'll say year 35 or something like that, sure. um, you're going to be getting 2K per year, which is about 166 bucks a month, kind of in perpetuity. Uh, it's almost. about 70K over the 35 years in interest alone. Yep. Yep. So that this is what it looks like if people were having a hard time kind of visualizing that. So spreadsheets always help me. And um, if, we, if we hit 5 million, then it's 15,000 tokens after six months. Okay. And like we're... I can say with confidence that we have pledges that I believe will come through of seven figures. So right now our pledges are sitting around $2.5 million. Now those won't be all done overnight. 
they are over the next two weeks. Um, but that's before even like looking at what the public wants to get. This is simply a few select uh, people that believe in what we're doing and they have dedicated a big chunk of their portfolio to, uh, to what we're doing. So okay. if that gives you any confidence in what we're doing, these guys have basically done their own due diligence on us. And just like you, uh, I sat down with them and I told them, you're about to buy $250,000 worth of things from me at the minimum. Ask me the questions like you are about to do it. And that changes the conversation because it's no longer, oh, well, where are you going to get your $500 worth of interest from? No, no. Where are you going to get a quarter million dollars worth of interest from? Show me the numbers. Let me see that this is a sustainable business and it's not a 3 million APY node release yeah. project. <laughs> you don't need to go further than that. We know what you're talking about. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, Kevin wants to know, do we have to sell our NFT to retrieve profit or is it going to be, are those tokens going to be airdropped or are you going to go in and claim You'll them? You'll just be able to claim them. Uh, there is no, you don't need to sell your NFT. You don't need to do any of that stuff. You will simply get it back because you know you put you basically you bought the nft and a part of your compensation well it's not compensation a part of the things you get is a number of tokens however the number of tokens has a an incentive structure to it kind of like game theory the more money we can put together the more the reward reward will be and it's not coming out of somebody else's pocket in terms of like the beneficiaries if you will it's technically coming out of my pocket because I now have to pay more interest, but it doesn't hurt the people that are helping the project at the very first level. Okay. And that was actually one of the questions. Um, where is the money coming from to pay investors back in six months? So that is the first phase, as I mentioned, which is our first line of credit. The operating line of credit is $500 million. And that is scheduled to start in 90 days, the first tranche. And that's what I mean when I say we have another 90 days on top as a buffer, because then that creates the six months um, to be able to make sure we have enough liquidity in our private marketplace. And in the scenario of delays, we have up to 90 days of delays before the marketplace liquidity is delayed. And that's, uh, that's where that buffer comes from. Okay, gotcha. And then how big is this company? Uh, three people doesn't seem enough to manage a $2 billion project. Correct. So we have our preferred engineering firm, which is Worley. They are a world-class engineering firm. We are looking at hiring approximately 6,000 people that will be building the pipeline. So there's definitely not just three people. And then once the pipeline is built, there's about 600 operating staff. And we touched on this beginning, perhaps you weren't here, but uh, there is 600 people operating this pipeline once it's running. And that's why James doesn't need to run and make sure his own compensation is working. Okay. That makes sense. Um, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sam, after six months, the interest will be in their token, not cash or stable coins. Correct. But the tokens are transferable for stable coins. Yes. Uh, correct. And that's where the liquidity of our private marketplace is the risk. As I mentioned is in the scenario of a delay of more than 90 days. That's where we start to delay, um, how much liquidity gets injected every day or every week. It will just be at a slower pace because we plan on having a cushion of liquidity available and it's basically going to go towards where is it needed first. So if we need a little bit more money for legal to make sure, you know, whatever hump in the road we're currently trying to get over to get liquidity, it will go there first. Otherwise, we'll start to inject it into the marketplace at a reasonable level so we don't run out of cash and get ourselves in trouble. and really damage the project and the people that own an NFT. Okay, gotcha. And who's loaning the 500 million for the- It, it is a private capital firm in the US. Okay. So there is about $800 million worth of real estate asset backing that uh, line of credit, but that 800 million is put up by our, by our loan facilitator. And what we're using as a collateral with them is the rights of the pipeline. Okay. And that was the next question. Are there any private equity companies involved? So if they're yeah. involved in the financing, they're not involved in the equity of uh, like Ambo pipeline. So Ambo pipeline limited is two people. Uh, Justin Collins is the first, he's the majority shareholder. And I'm the second one, uh, Ted and William are both salaried positions. 
Um, and royalty will obviously be, you know, a contract that gets paid out. Okay, gotcha. Um, let's see. I'm gonna skip that one. Skip that one. Yeah, if you guys have more questions, if I don't see them, just keep asking them, and I'll bring them up <laughs> when I can. Um, but if I buy an NFT for Pipeline One, are there chances of being invited for Pipeline Two and Pipeline Three in the future? I'm sure there will be. Like I said, the NFT holders for our proof of concept, they are on the priority list. They'll be the first ones that will be able to even get some form of an offer to be involved. Like anything that happens, think think like you're buying a whitelist to be a part of equity for oil in the future. That's how this is going to get treated. Um, I can't tell you the exact structure because that structure, again, needs to have legal approval and we need to make sure we are not going to get in trouble with the SEC in the future. So yes, your chance of being invited is like 99.9%. And that point one is if we're not doing it at all. So okay. that's uh, all right. And then what if the, uh, you, you talked a little bit about this, but I'll just ask again, but what if the pipeline's delayed? Most construction's delayed, especially on things oh, like this. Uh, absolutely. 100%, 1000%. My own house was delayed in construction. Let's put it that way. Um, we have 12 months, which is the first portion of the pipeline project. And that goes through, that's the environmental and social. And it's 12 months. It goes through four seasons. It's just to make sure there's no endangered species. There's no uh, sensitive parts that the pipeline is going to go through. And like we're going underground. Um, Justin has actually told me Ted has walked the entire path. And he's like legitimately he's walked the 800 kilometers um, over multiple periods of time, of course. Uh, but it's just to make sure it's not going anywhere that might raise a question later. In terms of delays, the actual construction is projected at 24 months. The nice thing is... As we proceed through our um, environmental and social, because we have everything pre-approved for funding and we're not, you know, we don't have like 5 million at a time and we're trying to constantly find new investors to get the next like little bit of cash to move forward, we can start ordering material ahead of time. Because the nice thing is our pipeline is running alongside a highway or a motorway, wherever you are in the world, just so you understand. Um, that had its own environmental study done and it's not going through cities it's actually going outside of the cities so most of the, the areas the pipeline's going through are empty fields or possibly farms that are privately owned and that's why we're able to do it in terms of delays uh, the actual timeline of paper says 36 to 42 months uh, but the 42 months would be if we're doing one thing at a time because we don't have the money to do things simultaneously in our scenario, private funding, we have the ability to start ordering material early, start to get uh, pieces of the oil pipeline ready before we dig into the ground. And then once they start to okay um, portions, basically of the route, then we can start to dig and put the pipeline in. That's, that's our biggest advantage to avoid uh, delays basically. And it gives us an additional buffer and if we're delayed, it's, uh, it definitely won't be anything crazy. And the reason for that, like I said, is we're able to start ordering material ahead of time. We're able to start paying for things really immediately as we start getting the OKs from the um, our engineering firm. Okay, gotcha. Awesome. Um, and then how is this project secured against failures? I think they're mainly wanting to know about insurance. Yes, um, so insurance is a must when you're... Any business, especially if you are with construction, you're building something, there is insurance in place. That's okay. a good question. Um, yeah. I'm glad somebody asked, but yes, there's insurance. Yeah. A necessary thing. Um, and then heard you guys are partnered with Warfi, and apparently they've already invested as well. Is this true? Coming um, from the head of Warfi. So, <laughs> so Jay, I want to thank Jason a ton, man. I can't thank that guy enough. Again, he's the reason you and I met. Uh, he's the reason a lot of us have met. Um, he's been with me basically before day one of us saying, yes, 100% we're going to go through the blockchain. And they've been like one of our backbone supports and basically doing all kinds of marketing campaigns, partnerships, AMAs, and really the deeper level of uh, connections. The actual meaningful ones, 
that have money uh, as opposed to you know jumping on an AMA of a random group of people who might not be even interested in what that group is about. Luckily, we're sitting with people like you, you know, the James, at some point, I'll call it the James Pelton tier, <laughs> 250 games. Um, and people who actually, you know, you clearly have people watching this AMA and they're asking the right questions. It's not people asking, well, why'd you come up with the company name? And it's like, company name really doesn't matter. Like, ask me why did I, what, why am I doing this business? What problem am I solving? That's, uh, yeah, long story. Long yeah. answer for a short question. Yeah, no, that's that's great. And actually, I want to let people know, too, that we we met um, because we you were looking for institutional investors or you were looking for bigger investors. That's right. And so we talked originally on that side of things like, hey, you know, are, are you wanting to put in 500K or something like that? Yeah. And through that conversation, we ended up talking about, well, what if we did it? What if you did NFTs or something like that? And you're like, I thought about doing that. And then just, you know, kind of went that direction. And yeah. uh, I think it's a great experiment and we'll be, we'll be I really think so cool. too. I think so too. I, everything, my fingers are crossed, my toes are crossed, but I know for the amount of hard work we've put into this project, it will pay off having a two week minting period. Um, I'm sure in some fancy bull market ideal day, we could raise all the money in a single day. However, that is not the reality right now. And Oftentimes, I have to remind anybody that's listening, hey, if you're listening to somebody dead smack of bear market that says they can raise $5 million in a day, like close and leave. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bottom line, you know? Um, and that's why we're doing it. We have three marketing, basically, marketing campaigns happening right now. We're, we've grown significantly over a two week period. Um, and anybody that we spoke with on a larger level, like an institutional level, at a six-figure level, even at a seven-figure level, we've had multiples of those uh, conversations. We spoke with those people before everything has happened. And just like with you, we actually broke the ice on the idea prior to us going, okay, 100% we'll go on blockchain for a 5 million raise. So those connections were set in place um, and people understood the risks at a much deeper level. A lot of them had NDAs associated. They had much more in-depth figures that were available just because of the contracts that were signed. Um, and that's, that's how we got really the deeper connections. And a lot of them were like, hey, this timeline doesn't work for us, but we are able to contribute to your project um, with a little bit of flexibility. So here we are, two week period, because we have a lot of people that believe in the project and hopefully the numbers will reflect that. I really, really hope so. Like working 17, 18 hours a day for months now, just to make sure this plays out anywhere close to, I, even, hey, if this works out at 50% of our goal, we're gonna be in a really good position and so will the people that take part in it. That's that's all I can say. I've. I'll let the things product speak for itself after this. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to just, I want to kind of piggyback on that too. And, and just let people know like this, there is risk. And uh, just, I want to always make sure that that's always said that there is risk. Yep. There's risk that things don't, you know, want to happen. And it's, it's the, uh, the reward for getting into early something like this is there's going to be risk, but there's a pretty substantial reward, you know, if it, if it yep. works out. Um, so that's just how investing is always going to be, is you're not going to find risk without reward um, and you're not going to find reward without risk. So that's kind of Absolutely. Kinda and that's, I, I'm glad, you know, you're reminding people and luckily, I, I don't know if it's insanity at this point because I'm talking about the project so much, but within the first 30 seconds, anybody that I'm speaking with, I'm like, listen, I'm going to tell you the risk up front. You don't have to like drag it out of me in some form of like a legally binding question. The risk is time. In the event things don't work out like they need to, it is time. And every step of the way, we've put a buffer in place to make sure if something goes wrong, we have a buffer on our end to make sure things go smoothly on a public level. And then if all of that is not enough of a buffer, then we will delay the public, at least at that point. If you're involved in our project, then you've heard me say, we have a lot of buffers in place. And if 
were delayed, there's a very good reason for it. It's not because I slept in and now the board of directors are, you know, angry at me and they're like, ah, oh, we, you didn't get the check signed in time or something like that. No, no, there's actual bigger things at hand. Okay. That's, that's the biggest risk. Um, and then other than that, really, if the project goes nowhere, it gets completely like, uh, I don't know, man. Something terrible happens, like absolutely terrible. They rip up the law in those three nations and they say like, it's free for all at this point. It's basically, uh, what's that night there? Um, the movie? Oh we, yeah, the, uh, the Purge? The Purge, unless yeah. it's like The Purge, we're really just, we're gonna move forward anyways. Um, that's like, that's how extreme I'm getting into the risk. I'm like, listen, unless it's that, we're still moving forward. There might be hiccups or delays here and there, but the reward of this project are so much more than any risk associated. My opinion, make your own opinion. <laughs> You know, I'm very clear about this. I, I got nothing to hide. I got nothing to sell you. It is my Discord bio. Is I got nothing to sell you. I only have things to show you. And then you can make your own decision. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Mountain Brother says, nice lion portrait. So, hey, I, I told you that was a winner right there, that lion portrait. It's, uh, it's a gift from my wife. Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. when we moved into this house about uh, a little over three years ago. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, have the deals been signed for the oil supplying the pipeline? Which companies have already signed or shown interest? Those particular answers I can only give once the contracts are signed. Uh, right now, they are verbal, uh, verbal agreements, if you will. And the only time the paper actually gets signed is after the environmental, sorry, is te okay, technicality, after the environmental and social are completed, then that's when you sign the paper contracts. However, generally, the moment you start that, it's a non-disclosures, whoever is, basically what I can share at the public at that point, it's what has been okayed by the sign, like the other party we're dealing with. But it's going to be oil shippers. So if you, the James Pelton, Pelton Oil Transport Company, you no longer want to use ships or tankers. You're going to want to use our pipeline because it's faster and it's cheaper. And then if you're an oil company and you possibly want to like stop using one of the oil shippers and just use this particular pipeline, you can do that. So it's really anybody at a deeper level than us. If that makes sense. Yep. Nope. That makes a lot of sense. Um, this is a good question. I thought what prevents the team from using the NFT funding for other pur uh, purposes? Uh, so, like, what guarantee is there that when people buy these NFTs, you're going to use the funds for what you say you're going to use them for? Because that's misuse of funds, and we will likely go to jail. <laughs> and you um, don't want to go to jail, correct? No, I'm, I don't. Oh, man, that's not the time to say it. But uh, I don't want to, obviously, I don't want to go to jail. Like I said, we're kyc by the UK government. Um, we are incorporated. There's two of us. We have clearly stated what we're using the money for. There is no speculative things. At that point, if that happens, then like it means the funding is already on the way. You know, like we have money in our bank account. You, as a person who purchased the NFT, you've received what we said you're going to receive. At that point, really, it's up to the company. Um, again, up until we get the funding, the uh, that particular money we get from the NFT raise is strictly for making sure we get our funding in place. Okay. Um, and then do you think there's any risk that liquidity will be too low and we won't be able to swap out of the AMBO tokens? It is not a liquidity pool. It is an exchange option. This is very important because a liquidity pool will mean there's like, we'll start with a 50-50 split. And as people exchange, the AMBO token will be worth like 10 cents and like there will be 10% left to liquidity. No, no, this is going to be an exchange of one-to-one. -one. It's not a liquidity pool. In the okay. scenario where there's not enough liquidity, it just means you need to wait for the next injection, which might be the next day or the next week, but it won't be, they won't be drastic uh, periods of waiting. Okay. And then we'll make this the last question before we tell people again, how to jump in. But yep. um, you mentioned this a little bit, but what's the timeline from event environmental studies to breaking earth of the pipeline to the first barrel passing through? 12 months for the environmental study because it needs to go through four seasons. 
Uh, there's no way to speed it up or slow it down. Um, you know, you just got to make sure you do four seasons, make sure there's no endangered species, make sure there's no um, things that digging and putting a pipeline underneath would risk. That's the 12 months. And then it's approximately 24 months between construct digging, basically, and the first oil barrel going through it. That is as long as everything's on time, like I said, and we have a buffer in there. Worst case scenario, 42 months from like today to the first oil barrel. Okay. So add another six months. Yep. And again, though, all those timelines are tentative. Like there's things that happen, could be earlier, could be later, but those yeah. are, but you put some buffers in already in those numbers. In, um, in the construction there. side, yes. Yes. The yeah. environmental is, it's 12 months. There's no, there's no buffer associated, uh, needed because it's not, it's not like somebody's walking the whole thing. Although while that's happening, uh, Ted, Justin, and myself will be traveling between the three countries and basically going through the cities, municip municipalities, villages, just to make sure whoever the new mayor is, she or he is comfortable with everything. If they have any concerns, we can uh, find a solution for them as fast as possible. And we're not delaying anything when construction begins. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I, I know I said last question, but we'll do one more here. But um, we've seen this happen in a lot of crypto projects where, yes. you know, one person from the team comes on and we feel all good about them. But then, oh, no, there was this other guy who I didn't know about who did all this stuff. Yeah. Um, how yeah. comfortable are you with the team? Um, put it this way. Justin is trusting me with way too much for a lot of this. And I'm trusting him with about the same. But in terms of legal obligations we're both on the incorporation articles. So if I mess up, he's also on the hook. If he messes up, I'm also on the hook. Like there's no, there's two of us. There's no hiding if either of us messes up really. We're docs and KYC. Yeah, I'm finally learning the difference between the two. A docs just means you say, hey, I'm so-and-so publicly. A KYC is somebody who's verified your identity basically. And the UK government has identified my uh my identity and Justin's. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Very good. All right. So for people who watch this and they're like, yeah, this is great. I think I definitely want to get in to yeah. this. Um, when is, is this, this is the right page to go to, but when yes. do you think it'll be open? That button is going to be live in two, three hours, give or take, but you guys have two weeks. There is no, um, you don't lose anything. You go to sleep if you need to go to sleep tomorrow. There's gonna be there is no limit on our NFTs. Uh, this is a very important question. There is no cap. We have a two week period. Anybody can come in during those two weeks. They will not be punished. We also are doing a free tier. The free tier has no rewards, and it's a limit one per wallet. Just I know it's gonna have some value to it once we close it. Then because people will be like, oh, you can't get this anymore. You're right. Uh, but that's why we're doing it a limit of one per wallet. However, the paid tiers, you can pick up as many as you want. It's really whatever you're comfortable with for risk and reward. Okay. Yeah. And it is, it's on Ethereum. Um, yes. But just again, I want to just emphasize for people, it's ERC721. So the gas fees are actually pretty low on those. It'll probably, my guess would be like eight bucks um, to mint one of these. Even less, uh, unless the GUI is really high. Um, but it is less than 10 bucks. That's for sure. Yep, absolutely. Um, and again, here are the tiers. Um, so this is what you're going to need on the Ethereum network and, uh, die or USDC or USDT. Yes. Um, yeah. what you're going to be using. So also then, to try and save people one less swap, we are, I think, so Adam, who is our developer for all this stuff, um, 99%, he wants to put, put in ether as a payment option as well. And that particular pricing will update every hour at least, um, just in case the price swings violently or something like that. Um, that's also going to be an option just so if people don't have stable coins, they can use Ether and they don't have to burn another gas transaction. It's not a big deal anymore because it'll probably cost you like 50 cents in gas fees now. Excuse me. But uh, a few months ago when it was proof of work, it would have probably cost like 50 bucks. That's, uh, that's not okay. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah, especially if you're only putting in 250 bucks, you hate to spend yeah. 50 bucks in fees to make that happen. So totally right. get that. 
So, well, awesome. Well, thank you, Akasim. It was great. I've talked with you on the phone, but it's great to talk with you face to face. I appreciate you bringing this to us. And uh, audience, please hit like on your way out if you have other questions. I think I put a link to the Discord, but if not, let me go ahead and grab that. The um, Discord is very easy. It's discord.gg slash ambo. Uh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> four four characters easy. to remember. And uh, our Twitter is also available. It's info underscore ambo. Um, it's freaking blowing up over the last few days. It is amazing. And hopefully it keeps going. But if you have questions, Twitter, Discord, our Telegram is also available. However, it's not as active. Discord is the priority. Um, same thing with Twitter. And yeah, AMAs, if you jump on, okay, take the chance. If you guys send a message in the next, what's it, 420, 40 minutes and say we came from the James Pelton AMA, send it, uh, send that. And then on Twitter, follow us and send a screenshot of that. I will give you a whitelist. What the whitelist does is it's going to get you first access to liquidity when the private market, uh, private marketplace is open. Okay. Gotcha. So yep. you'll be the first to be able to swap out those AMBO tokens. Correct. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you so much for bringing this in. Thank you for answering all our questions. Um, I'm sure we'll be talking more uh, as the, these next two weeks. I'll probably do another video. You might not be on, but I'll probably do another video just kind of going sure. over my understanding of things and uh, just yep. want to, you know, get people's eye. I like to connect projects with people is what I like to do. And so uh, this is one of those things. So thanks so much for hopping on answering questions. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, James. Yep. Thanks, Thanks everybody. everybody.